Tonight on Friday Night Smackdown, we have another episode of Miz TV, hosted, of course, by The Miz. I'm sure John Morrison will be there too. This week, The Miz's special guest is none other than Jeff Hardy. After last week's toast to Jeff Hardy on Friday Night Smackdown, that great segment, right? Uh, we'll get into that and we'll get into the preview um, for Smackdown and Miz TV and all of that fun stuff in this video. Um, so last week... That toast to Jeff Hardy. We did a preview last week when we did the SmackDown preview. We we previewed the Jeff Hardy and Sheamus toast segment because it was obviously something that I said at the time that WWE obviously really wanted to do, right? They'd hyped it up for a couple of weeks. We'd seen this. We're going to have a toast to Jeff Hardy next week. Um, that didn't happen originally because of the whole COVID testing, COVID outbreak in the WWE Performance Center. I say COVID outbreak realistically it wasn't a covid outbreak it was more of they started testing <laughs> less of oh it's this massive outbreak more of oh wait a minute we should really be testing we are testing oh my god everyone has it um was more of the thing so we got then the um undertaker tribute episode which had the full boneyard match an hour long um pretty much a portion of the show was dedicated to the undertaker uh, video packages testimonials from other wrestlers rivals and foes um and then uh jeff hardy the toast segment didn't happen sheamus wasn't on smackdown that week instead we got a jeff hardy versus king corbin match which i to be honest i'm not actually know i don't know which one i prefer in that case right what would you rather have <laughs> it's like what is the lesser of two evils having more king corbin and a king corbin promo and a king corbin main event or have what was that disastrous toast segment last week? I don't genuinely don't know which is better. That's like having that's like we spoke about the eye for the eye match earlier today. That's like having both eyes ripped out and just saying oh, which one did you prefer, the left or the right? So um, yeah, that was fun. So I thought last week going into this toast segment with Jeff Hardy, I thought well. They've had it planned for a couple of weeks. They obviously couldn't do it the week prior because of the COVID situation. They're really keen on doing this Jeff Hardy toe segment. They must have something quite big planned, right? Because they've wanted to do it for a while. They've uh, had it planned for a while. Something big, right? Something big is going to happen. So last week we have the toe segment. I was surprised, first of all. So they have in the ring, and they have all of the, all of the alcohol set up. There's like a weird like table, I guess like a bar set up there's a guy who is i guess like the bartender Seamus is hired a bartender but first out is jeff hardy i'm not much of a toast <laughs> right how what that's like getting to a surprise party but you're the first person there i mean it doesn't make any sense on that point jeff hardy well if you're jeff hardy why even go to it <laughs> we're going to Seamus is obviously mocking jeff hardy's addiction to his alcoholism his drug addiction saying i'm going to do a toast to jeff hardy yet jeff hardy shows up first I mean, what kind of situation is that? Jeff Hardy comes out like, oh, okay, get it over with Seamus. <laughs> don't go, Jeff. You don't have to go. Um, you know, maybe the addictions aren't done yet, apparently, because he was straight out there, wasn't he? Um, then we go to find out that Seamus isn't at the performance centre. He's at home. And I don't really want to speculate on, oh, does or doesn't he have COVID? Or has he tested positive? Or is he false negative or anything like that? I don't think it's really fair to speculate on that kind of thing. Um it would be interesting that he hasn't been in the performance center for two weeks and the isolation period is two weeks. But again, I don't really want to speculate on that. Needless to say, uh, Seamus was not in the performance center last week. He was at home. He was at Shamey's Bar, he called it, which is a bar he has in his own house. A lot of Guinness everywhere. He even dropped in a Liverpool reference, Liverpool FC reference. Obviously, Liverpool just won the league at that point. And as a Man United fan, I would nearly switched off right then. Not just to forget the segment there. I was just like, right, get it off. I had enough of that in the news anyway. Um, and so they do the segment where Seamus essentially just tries to make Jeff Hardy take a, a sip of alcohol, um, cause him a junkie again, cause him an alcoholic, a drug addict, all of that stuff. And you have the guy in the ring holds a glass of champagne pretty much to Jeff Hardy's nose. And at the time... I said this on Twitter, and I don't, I don't know the situation since. No one's really spoken about it, to be honest. I said at the time, if, if that really is, if that genuinely is an actual glass of champagne that they've put under Jeff Hardy's nose, then WWE should absolutely be ashamed of themselves. I mean, come on. 
this guy's an addict. He was in rehab last year. He's had multiple DUIs over the last few years that have been alcohol related. He's been arrested for you know public intoxication and you're putting a legitimate glass of alcohol underneath his nose. So I pray that that wasn't the case. I really, really hope that's not the case. I mentioned this on Twitter. I said if that genuinely is a glass of champagne they've put under Jeff Hardy's nose, then the WWE should be absolutely ashamed of themselves. Of course, the response I got from so many people was, come on, why, why would WWE do that? Would, do you think WWE would be silly and naive enough to do that? Come on, they wouldn't do that. And I said, right, if you think that WWE wouldn't do that, I go back to a segment in 2002. It was when Scott Hall was back with the NWO and Stone Cold Steve Austin was feuding with the NWO heading into WrestleMania 18. We had this segment, I believe it was on a SmackDown, where Stone Cold kidnaps Scott Hall, right? He ties him to a chair, puts duct tape on his mouth, and he's in all sorts of places in the building. Um, during this segment, uh, he would he openly had a, a, a can of beer in his hand whilst he was talking to Scott Hall. Uh, and later on in the ring, he would attack Scott Hall with this open can of beer, hit a load of stunners, pour beer on him, etc., etc. That was real beer. So let alone, we know Scott Hall's issues when it comes to substances and when it comes to alcohol specifically. Um, so that that alone would be enough to say, OK, that's too far. That's too much. Two, at the time, Scott Hall was actually on anti-alcohol medica medication. I believe it's called Antabuse, Antabuse, something like that, uh, whereby you take this tablet and even if you have the slightest, slightest bit of alcohol, you ingest the slightest bit of alcohol, whether it's having, I don't know, spaghetti bolognese and it's got a bit of red wine on it or something like that, you will get violently sick. I mean violently sick. You'll be vomiting, diarrhea, all sorts. During that period of time, because Scott Hall was so desperate to stay sober and the issues of sobriety and staying sober at that time were so difficult for Scott Hall, he was taking that medication. And yet WWE in those segments used beer to pour over and attack and have an open can of beer next to Scott Hall. And he turned out to be violently, violently ill. That is a true story. If you don't believe me, go check the Bruce Pritchard podcast about the NWO in the WWE. And he confirms it himself. So for people to say, oh, no, WWE, they wouldn't they wouldn't have a glass of champagne next to a guy that's just gone through rehab. They wouldn't do that. Yes, they would. Yes, they would. I don't know if it was or it wasn't. All I'm saying is, you know, don't be surprised if it is because they have a track record when it comes to this sort of thing. So that whole segment last week, um, it ends with Jeff Hardy obviously not taking the sip. It would be a pretty... It, imagine, I mean, it was a bad segment anyway, but can you imagine <laughs> if it ends with Jeff Hardy just going, yeah, actually, you know, screw it. Give me the champagne. I'll have a drink. Um, that would have been worse. And I'm not and going through this. I was thinking, what point is Seamus trying to really prove here? Right. I know he's trying to imply that Jeff Hardy is a drunk and has these vices. But what does Seamus get out of trying to make Jeff Hardy drink? I, I guess that's just he's just the heel. But I mean, I don't I, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense there. Um, and this whole storyline anyway, it's just terrible, isn't it? It's just terrible. It's in bad taste. I mean, I mentioned this a lot of times here on the channel, but it just it's just not good. Is it? It's just not good. Um, that's what it is. It's just it's poor taste. Um, they're making money and they're making light out of someone's personal issues, which this isn't a Shawn Michaels situation, right? This isn't an Eddie Guerrero situation where these demons and these issues are years and years behind Jeff Hardy. These issues... <laughs> Go back to like October of last year. This is only like nine or ten months ago. Jeff Hardy's last arrest, I believe, was in like when it was nine or ten months ago. He still is in legal proceedings over his last DUI, right? Because of the whole COVID situation, the courts have been backed up. They've not been taking on cases like this, or they've been being delayed for those that you know aren't super important or urgent. They're delayed. So Jeff Hardy's legal proceedings are still ongoing about a DUI that he got, and yet WWE, at the same time in which these legal proceedings are ongoing, WWE are making money out of it through a storyline on network television on Fox. Wow. I mean, wow. I mean, honestly, it, they, they will sink to no lows. To Literally, to there is no low. You can't go low enough if you're WWE when it comes to creative storyline. They are that deprived of creativity on the creative team that they have to use someone's misfortunes, addictions, and their family's misfortunes for their monetary gains. It's just... 
It's terrible. It's terrible. And I just think back to Jeff Hardy, this whole this whole run, all right? So when we knew that Jeff Hardy was coming back and we were hearing these rumors uh, p- before WrestleMania and obviously seeing the vignettes after WrestleMania, Jeff Hardy's coming back, Jeff Hardy's coming back, Matt Hardy's gone. His contract expired when it was originally scheduled to expire because he didn't really have any injuries during this run. You've got to remember, originally, uh, the Hardys contract would have expired around April time of this year because that's when they made their debut or re-debut return uh, at WrestleMania in 2017. Three-year deals, that would have been up uh, in April, around April time of this year. And it was the same for Matt Hardy. He goes to AEW. He's there now working uh, on Dynamite every single week. Jeff Hardy's a different case. He's had a numerous, numerous load of injuries. He's had shoulder injuries, knee injuries. He's been out for nearly a year on a couple of separate occasions. He's pretty beat up. So he's got a long time added onto his contract, probably about an extra year, to be honest. If that's being probably a bit short, he maybe has a little bit longer added on there. So everyone knew Jeff Hardy coming back. Finally, Jeff Hardy's healthy. You know, he's got his injuries sorted. He's got his sobriety sorted. All of his personal demons look to be in the past, hopefully. This is going to be Jeff Hardy's last run with WWE. He's been very open with saying that, like, this is probably it for him. You know, he's in his 40s now. We know the style that Jeff Hardy's had throughout his career, right? It's not a style that's um, that helps longevity in a career for, especially for a WWE superstar, but for any professional wrestler, look at someone like Mick Foley. To be honest, it's a miracle that Jeff Hardy, only in the last couple of years, has had his first couple of major injuries in his career because... I mean, just look at the style. He must be beat up to hell anyway. And that's where some of his issues did start from because he was just beat up to hell. And so, yeah, we he goes on and he's speaking quite openly. This might be his last run with WWE. We don't know what's going to happen at the end of his contract. And he's talking about all the people he'd like to face, right, in this final WWE run. And he mentions Roman Reigns, right? A Jeff Hardy, Roman Reigns feud or match, that'd be great. That'd be amazing. He mentions Bray Wyatt. He mentions maybe having a cinematic match with Bray Wyatt and The Fiend. And people, again, were going, this is great because we know what Jeff Hardy can do with the out there creative stuff, right? We know about Brother Nero and that whole cinematic stuff that he did with his brother and um, the final deletion and the whole broken universe. And people are going, oh, that'd be amazing. The Fiend, Brother Nero, maybe bring Willow back in. We can get some right crazy stuff. They're doing cinematic wrestling in WWE right now. This is going to be awesome, right? It's going to be awesome. And he also mentions people, you know, Daniel Bryan, he would like to face and he'd want to face AJ Styles again. He obviously faced him, I believe, a couple of times in, in, in TNA, but it wasn't Jeff Hardy at his peak in TNA. He was going through a lot of stuff at the time. So people were excited, naturally. This is great. And this is no slight whatsoever against Sheamus. But as soon as everyone saw he was facing Sheamus, everyone kind of went, uh, well, OK, you know, introductory feud. Right. Bring him back to the WWE. Have this quick feud with Sheamus. Get a win. Get out of it. Bang. And then, yeah, we just have, you know, you're an alcoholic, you're a drug addict, distasteful, drunken DUI hit and run, which, by the way, the police have done nothing about, by the way. There is still, Elias is still out of an injury in, you know, obviously he did tear his peck, but in kayfabe storyline, someone ran over Elias, set up Jeff Hardy and got away with it. I mean, that was a couple of months ago now. What's what's going on? Unsolved Mysteries has just come back on Netflix. I think the drunken hit and run of Elias should be in season two because nothing has happened When it comes to that at this point, nothing apart from Jeff Hardy going, oh, they said, uh, eyewitnesses said they had red hair and a red beard. But Seamus is fine. He's at home. He's drinking. Right. Maybe that's the deal. Maybe he's under house arrest or this court case is probably coming. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes with WWE, if you try and add too much logic to it and maybe just professional wrestling in general. But if you try and add too much logic to these sort of things, you will drive yourself insane. Um, And I think maybe that's the case with this kind of storyline for me. For me, I don't understand why Jeff Hardy had to lose a backlash either. I thought after all that he's gone through in this storyline, at least he's going to win a backlash and then it's said and done. Uh, but Sheamus beat him at backlash and quite convincingly, to say the least. So obviously the feud isn't done. We've seen that the feud isn't done because they've had this this ongoing thing now on SmackDown post backlash. We had the toast last week, which went nowhere. I mean, I'll, I'll finish discussing this now. So Seamus tries to make him drink. Jeff Hardy says no. Uh, pours the champagne over the poor guy's bartender's head in the ring. Who's Yeah, he's just doing his job. I'm assuming Seamus paid him, so he's just doing his job. Uh, and then he glasses him. He literally smashes the glass over the guy's head. Poor guy. Poor guy. I mean, at the end of that segment, I guess you're meant to feel sympathy for Jeff Hardy. The person I felt sympathy for was the guy who had just been glassed. 
Not Jeff Hardy. I mean, I was kind of looking at Jeff Hardy going, why have you been bothered going out there, Jeff? You know, why? So this feud doesn't seem to be over. It looks as if we'll get another Jeff Hardy versus Sheamus match at Extreme Rules. In terms of what the stipulation will be, I don't even I don't even know if I could guess anymore because some of the stipulations we're seeing for Extreme Rules, excuse me, the horror show at Extreme Rules, um, an eye for an eye match, a Wyatt Swamp fight. I mean, who knows? Who knows? I mean, maybe Vince Russo is booking this because maybe we'll see a bottle of Jack Daniels on a pole. Or something because honestly, it feels like this is where it's going. A steel cage, but around the steel cage, there are just various bottles of alcohol strapped to the steel cage. You've got Jack Daniels there, you've got Jagermeister there, you've got a bottle of vodka at the bottom attached to the turnbuckle. I mean, who knows at this point? WWE is just getting wacky when it comes to some of these um, extreme rules, excuse me, the horror show at extreme rules stipulations. So it looks like we'll get another, another Jeff Hardy Sheamus match. I'm assuming that'll probably be like announced tonight on Miz TV and I'm assuming that's going to be the case here with Miz TV tonight the Miz will just probe Jeff Hardy what do you think about Seamus saying these things what do you think about Seamus calling you a drug addict and a junkie and an alcoholic uh, who do you think actually framed you because we still don't know yet it was just a guy with red hair and a red beard whoever that may be um, maybe it's Eric Rowan's doppelganger with a wig on so maybe I think that's what we'll get tonight. He'll just probe. Maybe we'll even get a Miz versus Jeff Hardy match. Personally, I'd love to see a Miz versus John Morrison match. We saw a few of them back in the day in SmackDown on around 2009, around the, around the time Jeff Hardy was last uh, just about to leave the company last time because that was when John Morrison moved to SmackDown and became a babyface. And I think pretty quickly he won the Intercontinental Championship and a great match against, uh, against Rey Mysterio. And off the top of my head... I think John Morrison might have actually teamed with the Hardy Boys on SmackDown just before Jeff Hardy left. I think they had like a six-man tag against CM Punk and the Hart Dynasty. Um, I'm not sure if they've actually faced off one-on-one. Oh, of course they have. As Johnny Nitro and Jeff Hardy on Raw in like 2006, they faced each other like a million times. But they're different competitors now, to be honest. Uh, that was you know Johnny Nitro just becoming uh, a singles wrestler and Jeff Hardy doing his Intercontinental Championship. So, of course, they faced each other, but... That's probably why I didn't even think about it then, is that they're so different now, right? They've improved so much and they're much more different characters. So I'd love to see a Jeff Hardy versus John Morrison match tonight on SmackDown. Maybe they do that. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. I'd love to see that. Uh, Especially after last week, John Morrison versus Matt Riddle was something else. That was tremendous. Um, One of the best matches on the show without a shadow of a doubt. Um, So hopefully they do something like that. As I mentioned, I think we'll probably get a Sheamus versus... Uh, Jeff Hardy announcement for Extreme Rules, whatever that stipulation is, I'm sh- I'm I put my neck out on the line. I reckon it's going to be something really wacky and weird. Maybe like a ladder match <laughs> with a bottle of beer at the top of it. Who knows? Who knows at this point with that Extreme Rules pay for you? It's just getting craziness and craziness. Uh, but hopefully that'll be the end of this Jeff Hardy versus Sheamus feud, feud at Extreme Rules, and then we can move on to something a bit more substantive for Jeff Hardy, whether it is a an Intercontinental Championship feud with AJ Styles or whether it's uh, being against uh, The Fiend at SummerSlam, even though I think The Fiend will face Braun Strowman. Uh, Something, you know, something of substance and something that we can really sink our teeth into and go, this is good. I think sometimes when it comes to this kind of story, when it comes to what WWE perceives as pushing the envelope, when it comes to real life stuff like addiction, you've got to think every time they've done an addiction storyline, it's sucked. I mean, it has. And how often has this addiction storyline been used at Jeff Hardy's expense? We had it with CM Punk in 2009. Samoa Joe referenced it a couple of years ago on SmackDown. We're doing it again. I mean, that's three times already. And just in professional wrestling history, I think back to Hawk in 1998 when they were using about Hawk falling off the wagon. That was terrible because it was bad taste. When he did it with Scott Hall in WCW, it was terrible. Why? Because it was in bad taste. It's never in good, good taste. And I think... WWE sometimes thinks that this kind of storytelling or this kind of subject matter is important, right? We're pushing the envelope. We're doing real world stories. And sometimes this is professional wrestling. And whilst I love an element of reality to professional wrestling, I don't think this is reality because it's so over the top that you lose the reality immediately. You had someone do a hit and run and just nothing happened about it. Your reality died right there. So this storyline can't end quick enough for me. And hopefully we'll get the end of it at Extreme Rules and then Jeff Hardy can move on. Uh, but I said, main thing I would say I'm looking forward to tonight, I'm hoping we get a Jeff Hardy versus John Morrison match. I can't believe I forgot that yeah, it was Johnny Nitro versus Jeff Hardy like a million times in 2006. 
If you go back to 2006, 2007, honestly, they faced each other like a million times on Raw. It was outrageous. Um, I mean, do you remember the segment backstage? Jeff Hardy does that painting. And then John Morrison or Johnny Nitro at the time, like, throws it down. He goes, man, that's my painting. And then he throws the paint all over him. I can't believe I forgot all that, that classic <laughs> that classic stuff. I forgot. I believe I forgot all that. Uh, but hopefully we get that tonight. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Uh, but what are your thoughts on Friday Night Smackdown? Will you be watching tonight? Will you be watching Miz TV with Jeff Hardy on it? What are your thoughts on the Jeff Hardy Sheamus feud? Do you think we'll get one more match between them both at Extreme Rules? If so, what do you think the stipulation would be for that match? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Wrestle News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video, along with another video for you to watch. You can follow us on all of our social media platforms on the screen right now. It's at 365Wrestle on Twitter, at Wrestle News 365 on Facebook and Instagram. I'll be live tweeting Smackdown tonight, so be sure to give me a follow there. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. And I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.